So the atrioventricular valves are going to prevent blood from backflowing into the atria from the ventricles every time the ventricles contract. So the ventricles can get so full of blood and blood pressure can become so high in the ventricles that the blood inside of the ventricles will start to push backward, vigorously push backward. If these valves weren't here, it could actually flow backward right back into the atrium. And this can be very unhealthy. So you have these AV valves there to block and prevent that. So you have your right AV valve, also called your tricuspid valve. And your right AV valve is going to, of course, function to prevent backflow from the right ventricles into the right atrium. And your left AV valve is going to function to prevent backflow from the left ventricle into the left atrium. Your left AV valve actually has two names. It's commonly called the mitral valve, which is its clinical name. And it also is called the bicuspid valve. Now, these valves are named by the amount of cusps they have. Your right AV valve is going to have three cusps, so it's going to be called your tricuspid valve, tri for three. While your left AV valve is going to have two cusps, and it's going to be named bicuspid, bi for two. A way I remember the difference between tricuspid and bicuspid valve is calling the tricuspid valve the trite cuspid valve instead of tricuspid valve. Another analogy is try before you buy. Your tricuspid valve is going to come first and then your bicuspid valve is going to come second. So you try and then you buy. So your chordae tendine is going to automatically become activated whenever the ventricles are full of blood. Uh, the chordae tendine help with the prevention of backflow opening in the AV valves due to high blood pressure in the ventricles. And these chordae tendine actually kind of tells you the structure of it. Cord, meaning cords of collagen. Chordae tendine is going to be attached to papillary muscle. 